Sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, so Austin Mann isn't just one of the best photographers in the business. He also happens to be one of the best iPhone photographers. Every year when Apple puts out a new iPhone, Austin takes it somewhere jaw-dropping to test out, like Iceland or the Sahara, and then he posts a camera review of everything he likes and, yeah, doesn't like about the new sensor, chipset, and software. And when he's not doing that, he's traveling around the world shooting famous places, famous faces, and capturing awe-inspiring moments from pretty much anywhere and everywhere. I had the chance to meet up with him and chat when he was in Montreal a couple of months ago and had so much fun I asked him if he'd come back so we could chat with all of you as well. And he was gracious enough to say yes. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. Hey, Austin, how's it going, man? Hey, good to see you, man. Uh, it's been a little while. I think our first ever video chat, but it was great yeah. to meet you up in Montreal not too long ago. Yeah, that was awesome. I, so let me, let me start at the beginning, though. When you're shooting with the traditional camera gear these days, what, what are you shooting with? I kind of work with a bunch of different tools, and I, I like that part of it. I, um, <laughs> I'm always interested in like, what's the new uh, technology out there, what, what is enabling me to do things I haven't been able to do before. And, um, of course, always changing like that, you kind of run the risk of... Um, you know, not re ever getting really well tuned into your equipment. Um, and so I'm always kind of balancing that tension of like, hey, what's that new shiny capability over there? But also like I need to deliver on this client job and I can't like not get the shot because the button's in a different place or whatever. So um, I work across the board, but um, uh, probably most often I'm shooting uh, with uh, Hasselblad um, X1B oh, nice. or um, also their H60, which is their... 100 megapixel um, uh, larger format camera and uh, and then I work a lot um, uh, traditionally I've been working with Canon for many years but I've also started playing with the Nikon Z7 I really like their mirrorless um, system and uh, haven't really uh, gotten into the Sony's I had um, an A9 for some time but um, I see why people love them uh, just I, it's not been the right camera for me, and uh, and then of course I work with the the iPhone a ton as well. So I love that. I mean, some people will buy a Canon body and glass, and then like just keep piling on that investment, uh, that investment in the experience, and obviously the financial investment in all the glass. But you seem to be pursuing the art and moving between whichever tools will best take you there. Is that fair? Yeah, that's an interesting observation. I think when I'm choosing my camera and I'm thinking about uh, what the right tool is, I, I really have you. I think it's important for me, but for you, for anyone uh, that's listening, if you're as you're choosing your tools, I think the the really the driving question should be what which of these tools am I creating uh, work that I'm the most proud of with, and and really that should be the question. There could be amazing features on you know camera a yeah. uh that but if camera b is what you're producing your absolute best work with like who cares about the features if the, what you're the most proud of is camera b then go for camera b and and stick with it and uh is that is that similar with phones i mean the iphone is what you're known for but google's pixel has a great camera now huawei samsung there are a lot of good cameras now what keeps you on the iphone you know, I've been working on the Mac platform, the Apple platform, um, since the late 80s, you know, and my dad had uh, uh, a Mac in 84. So I've been in the ecosystem, candidly, you know, since I was born. And um, wow. so, like, I never have uh, been, you know, fully active on uh, a Pixel or um, Galaxy or anything else like that. I've played with the devices, but it's not been something that I've ever carried as my primary device and like you said like super capable cameras really um yeah super capable great cameras um software is getting a lot better across the board and um for some people that's the tool that they're the most dialed into and that's where they're you know producing the 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 fruit that they're the most proud of and so um, I, yeah, but like picking up the iPhone, I think it's interesting uh, when you're kind of reflecting or like, well, what makes a photograph uh, something I'm proud of? Like, what is that kind of criteria? Well, well, you know, obviously it's an image that you're proud of, but it's also one that maybe, uh, you know, impacts those around you. And in order to impact 
those around you, you need to share it. And on your iPhone, if I shoot something on my iPhone, I'm probably 10 times more likely to share it uh, <laughs> so. than if I were to shoot it um, on pretty much any other um, camera. And so I think it's interesting to, to realize that and just like, cause all of a sudden, you know, you just text it immediately. And, and you know, the other cameras are getting better at Wi-Fi connecting to your phone and sending it through that and all this, but it's still like these hoops that I just don't, I, for me, I, there's still extra hoops that keep me from sharing uh, an image. So if I don't need uh, to capture something in super high resolution or, you know, if it's not for a specific reason, a lot of times I'll reach for my iPhone just for that one purpose of like, I know I want to share this with, you know, Renee or whoever. And so I'm going to shoot it with my iPhone and then share it. And it's, so now we're in the age of not just photography, but computational photography, where we're using things like machine learning and computer vision and, uh, you know, to produce images beyond what the lenses and sensors themselves are actually capable of capturing. So uh, as someone who came from that traditional photography world, I guess, um, what do you think of all these new capabilities? You know, I think there's a there's some really exciting things about it. I think there's like a couple of kind of tricky things about it. Um, I think uh at the at the at the high level like um the i think there's this assumption that there's like the big cameras that are you know doing um things only big cameras can do and then there's the smartphone cameras that are small and they're using software to try to get closer to what the big cameras can do and that is true in some capacities but i think what a lot of people don't realize or recognize is actually software uh, because the camera is so heavy on software and computational photography, it can actually exceed what those big cameras can do in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's not just trying to like, li like live up to a big camera. And there's still definitely things that the big camera can do that the smartphone can't, but there's new capabilities like over here, like beyond. Um, and that's a really interesting uh, observation. And so... I think anytime you're working with a camera, playing to its strengths is really um, is really important. And so knowing what those strengths are, knowing that the computational side, uh, computational photography on the iPhone is one of its strengths, which means it's you know tonally mapping images differently and uh, smart HDR and things like that. That um, you know it's it's fundamentally different, uh, changing the rules of photography as we we know them. And um, and so yeah, I think like. Yeah, play to the strengths, know what it can do, know what it can't um, for both the big cameras and the smartphone cameras. I think it's important to keep that uh, perspective now and it will be ever, it'll be increasingly important in the future. I loved your blog post because every time Apple makes a new camera, and let's be honest here, these things are just as much, if not more cameras for, more, for most people these days than like talkie talkie phones. Uh, every time Apple makes a new phone, you take it somewhere legit spectacular, you shoot the stuffing out of it, and then you post a full on review. And in your iPhone XR, in your iPhone XS review, you made a comment about how you were trying to shoot a silhouette, but the new smart HDR feature was exposing both the sky and the shadows and how you were now like caught in between the technology and the art yeah yeah so i think that's the that's kind of the tricky spot is um you know that's so powerful like no traditional camera certainly like no film camera could have ever captured that kind of dynamic range I've, i'm like i'm shooting into midday sun and i've got like black rocks in front of me and it's exposing the midday sun and the rocks like perfectly fine, which is just um, any photographer, especially traditionally trained photographer knows that that kind of dynamic range to do both of those really well and give me detail in both is just not something that film or traditional sensor can accomplish. And so it's a great example of the power of computational photography, but also that, you know, um, I was having a little bit of trouble in that moment expressing myself as an artist. I wanted, yeah. uh, when you silhouette um, an object, you force the viewer to appreciate its shape and the contour, and you're extracting the texture because you don't really think the texture is that interesting, maybe, and you just want to show the shape. Well, in that example, it's actually kind of tough uh, to do that, and that's because of how powerful the camera was. And so, you know, I wrote that because I think I know um, for a fact that at the center of the iPhone uh, camera experience is, is how do we find ways to help artists, you know, express their visions and express their, uh, yeah, express their visions. And, uh, and so I think that will be an ever growing challenge. Um, this, 
also for the traditionally trained photographer as um, another challenge is that th there's kind of this uh, inherent complexity on the computational side of photography that yeah. I might be taking a picture and uh, something might be happening that I don't love. Well, I don't know necessarily why. There's all of these algorithms and different things that are happening, uh, no matter, you know, on any smartphone that you're taking pictures with. Um, it's, it's relying on so much software that I, I might take a picture and be like, oh, well, that looks weird. And I don't know how to change it. Where if I had a traditional film camera or just, uh, you know, a traditional DSLR, I'd be like, oh, you know, the ISO is too high or my focus is off because of this or like I know these very like direct clear settings and the parameters and the relationship that they have with each other and now it's like I've tried everything uh, and I have no idea why that's still happening but it, it might be related to the accelerometers or the <laughs> you know other things that you don't that a traditional photographer is not thinking about and so that um, that will be an inherent challenge as well. Um, and you know, the trade-offs are worth it, but there's, there's just kind of these new tricky spots that you've got to be more aware of and, and, uh, and di kind of some different powers that you have to think a little bit differently about. Okay, so when you are shooting with your iPhone, what's your workflow like? Do you just shoot and store or share, or do you pop into like a bunch of apps and do tweaks and do all that kind of stuff before you post? That's yeah. Um, you know, it's, it varies um, a bit even from year to year. I feel like, I almost feel like every year, uh, you know, in the in the film days, like there's, uh, you know, there's Kodachrome and Ektachrome and all these different films. They all have different properties, different natures. And like one will kind of spike the reds and others will mute the reds and it's some- like character. Yeah, there's character to these different films. And I almost feel like each year the iPhone, sensor is like a new film and the like the oh, first yeah. month is like discovering kind of like the properties of this new film like the 10s was like oh man this one's really like popping those shadows you know and uh and uh, um balancing the highlights or whatever the dynamic like and so <clears throat> usually the first couple of months is um getting a little bit uh, accommodated to or acclimatized almost to the current uh, iPhone, you know, sensor properties. And then based on whatever those are, I'll add my own pop. Um, so I, I like to keep them pretty neutral. My, my images are generally, um, you know, not highly stylized. Um, they, I really rely on, on light and timing to try to create unique images and less, uh, on in post process, uh, post processing. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I will take them into, um, Snapseed or Lightroom CC, I've been using a ton more, and I actually use Lightroom CC on my Mac as well. Um, and so, um, yeah, and it, it also depends on where does the final image go? You know, am I printing yeah. it? Um, is it getting shared on Instagram? Is it getting uh, shared in a behind the scenes album somewhere? Um, it depends on all those types of things. And are you shooting, sorry, are you shooting with the built in camera app, or do you use manual camera apps like Halide or Obscura? Man, I am, I am so like committed to the native camera app. I, I've try, I try all of them all the time, and I set up the series shortcuts and I do all the things. But I, nothing is as stable as the uh, native camera, and also the native camera is incredibly um, diverse, or like it's very, uh, it's very powerful across. Um, uh, it's very nimble and agile and me and what I mean by that is the whole iPhone as a camera platform its advantages are that it is nimble and agile and I might be shooting this photo here and then be like oh this looks amazing I want a slow-mo video of it well especially if I'm like in the moment capturing and kind of dynamically just asking myself what's the best way to capture this scene well at first I thought it was a photo but now I think it's a <clears throat> a slow-mo video while in a native camera, I just can just swipe over yeah. and I'm in slow-mo video. If I'm using any of the other apps, it's not really like that. And I'm not getting that great strength from the iPhone platform. I'm not getting the most of it. I'm like switching apps and it takes a while to open and it's like, hey, you need to update. And then it's like all these things that are between me and my image. And that doesn't happen with the native camera. And 
that's really hard to um, replace. And so if I have a very specific shot that I'm looking for, um, like a long exposure with light trails, uh, I might pop open Spectre from Halide or um, yeah. Nightcap Pro or, um, you know, there's there's very specific use cases like that. But um, 99% at, at least of the images that I shoot are shot inside of the native camera. So for people who may just be starting out, who either just got their first camera or camera phone, or are just starting to want to use it for photography, what what tips and what advice can you give them? One of the one of the big things is you know when you are taking a picture, uh, slow down for a second and uh, you know be mindful of what you are finding interesting about this place or this scene or this person that's in front of you. Whatever you're photographing, you know. Um, don't just go snapping like ask yourself like why is this interesting to me and have uh an opinion about it and have um you know if you're if you ask yourself that question then a lot of times it'll create a unique perspective on uh whatever it is that's happening like maybe you find something interesting that no one else is finding interesting and that's actually the mark of more of an artist and so i think uh that's important i think um you know, whether your subject is a person or a landscape or anything else, I think it's important to find unique ways to connect to your subject. And you should, um, if you're t making a portrait, I've heard it said many times, you know, it, to make a portrait first, you need to make a friend. And that means, you know, connect to this person and find out who they are. And if you as the photographer don't connect to the person in front of you, then you can never expect your viewer to connect to that person uh, yeah. through the photograph. And the point of taking the photograph is uh, for that viewer to be able to connect to this this person and so um, you know being really aware of that connecting with that person and making sure that if you are working with people that it's a dignifying process you're not objectifying them um, as like you know oh man I'm traveling in the developing world and there's like these you know people on the streets I'm gonna take these pictures of them and like post them and get a lot of likes like that's the last thing that we should be thinking yeah. about we should be looking for ways to find hope in people and find where light overpowers Uplift, darkness. Yeah. And, uh, and um, so looking for those narratives and dignifying people above all else throughout the storytelling process and through the images, I think is really important. And, um, and yeah, so like th those two things come to mind. And, you know, if you're really interested in becoming a photographer uh, for a living, you know, I would, um, I would just shoot like crazy. Like, I think it's, like super it seems super obvious like oh yeah you want to be a photographer take pictures well people don't do it we can take so many pictures and it doesn't cost anything because it's not film I, it's kind of cost because you got data to back up but not really and so like go out and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot more than everyone else and then um like that's how you find your voice that's how you shape your craft and that means, um, I think it was Jay Maisel that once said, you know, you got to be doing your creative uh, push-ups uh, so that when the client calls on Monday and needs you to uh, bench press 300 pounds on Thursday, you're ready. And uh, I think for anyone that's thinking about pursuing a career in photography, um, I think I really think that that is such an obvious piece of advice from famous photographer Jay. And uh, but it's but it's harder to do than you might think. But get out and shoot. What about people who are experienced, even pros, and they've got photography block or they just they feel stuck or burned out or caught in a rut or just looking for some creative, new, fresh perspective? Have you got any advice for them? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, for me, like, you know, you got to know how you personally replenish. I replenish and I'm inspired by nature. I'm inspired by being out in the world and, and just watching and just pondering nature and the beauty there and, and looking at light and how it falls on, on nature. And so that's for me, like how I get out, I'll go take a walk and just take my iPhone. And there's something really pure about that creatively. And, um, so yeah, I think, you, you know, you don't want to let the technology get in your way. Um, a lot of times that happens like, Oh, like I'm not going to go shoot because I got to get my tripod and I got to get that lens out yeah, and yeah, clean yeah. this and clear off my SD cards and, 
do all this stuff and then I'll have to dump them and I'll probably never dump them. They don't have to, you know, this whole thing. Like the iPhone is amazing for that um, as a platform for just like kind of sh sculpting your vision. And that's what's going to set you apart more than anything else is your vision and how you express it. So don't let that gear get in your way. And that's, um, and you know, no, it, like for some people, they replenish when they're with people and having uh, conversations with uh loved ones or whatever like but know know what that is so you can stay uh replenished and and then yeah i mean we all we all get that block i think it's really easy to have like set really high expectations for um who we want to be online it's really easy whether explicitly or implicitly to begin comparing yourself to the other like amazing things that you see online and um yeah. i think uh, you know one of the i read this book um last year that uh had a a couple of meaningful takeaways and one of them was um something along the lines of don't compare yourself to others instead compare yourself to yesterday and just be better tomorrow yes. than you were today and um that's a really powerful concept that i think is really relevant for anyone that's living on social is uh or you know that's a photographer or a photographer or anybody on the internet like you just just focus on being better tomorrow than you are today and uh, put one foot in front of the other and that'll lead you some really cool places if you work hard on on your craft And you said shoot upside down last time, too. <laughs> yeah, and shoot upside down. That one's a good one uh, Yeah, like tactically if we're gonna talk like tactical iPhone photography um, Yeah, that's one of my favorite uh, tips is just um, shoot upside down so uh, Especially if you have like the ground right here and you've got like a puddle like, you know a lot of people do this and then you've got yeah. this distance right here um that is showing me uh or you know that i'm like six five inches or whatever away from the water but if i really want a cool one you can you can trigger the shutter with the volume button and just yeah. get right there um and i actually sometimes even dip my iphone if it's fresh water you can go in and out you know if you have uh like um like just kind of you can break the surface with your iphone of the water um uh if you're working with a like an eight or later and uh yeah yeah, so um, that's a good tactical tip. And then burst mode is the other like secret oh, yeah, power. Yeah. You know, hold the shutter down and you're shooting about 10 frames a second. And that's a great way um, to get the perfect, uh, the perfect moment. So last question. You were one of the judges for this year's hashtag shot on iPhone competition, uh, or I guess challenge, I should say. What was that like sorting through all the entries, seeing all the photos, picking the eventual winners? Yeah, it was really cool. It was um, it was cool to see, you know, the the iPhone camera has come such a long way, and I think one of the coolest, one of my favorite things about the generation of today and uh, where the iPhone has played a really big role in is just getting the everyday person to begin speaking the visual language. And you know, it used to be that very few, only professional photographers and filmmakers, or maybe painters or whatever. Uh, we're speaking the visual language like yeah. um, uh, where they're they're sharing with their peers and community in the world through visuals. Well, with an iPhone, like everyone has begun speaking and sharing in the visual language. Um, we've always consumed it. All of us have always consumed it, but only a small number were creating. And now it's just really cool to see the voice of the masses, you know, and uh, to be able to see like technically proficient, beautiful images of life, of relationships and loved ones and adventures um, and that are like all, you know, very much, many of them very technically proficient and beautiful. And it creates a certain type of, uh, you know, a raw view on uh, our, uh, on the generation of today um, in a way that we just wouldn't have been able to see it uh, year, not, only just a few short years ago. So it's a joy to see that. And it's just a joy to see, yeah, the creativity across the board that people had and of course, some really strong images in there. And I, I thought that the, the winners uh, that they announced were um, totally, um, they were a lot of the same ones that I had uh, picked out as well. And so totally validated and, and definitely uh, a good, good selection of winners there. So I can't wait to see them up um, uh, all over the world or wherever uh, they, oh, yeah. I don't know when that's actually happening, but I can't wait to see them up uh, printed big. Great. Thank you so much for doing this. So much fun. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, it's awesome to talk to you, man. Now, if you don't just want to get into cameras, but you want to get into making the actual camera apps, well, that's why there's Brilliant.
Brilliance Daily Problems are a fun, bite-sized way to master concepts by applying them. Each problem comes with illustrations, animations, or interactive visualizations, and all the context you need to solve the problem yourself. Now, if you like the problem and you want to learn more, there's a related course that explores the same concept in greater detail. AI, machine learning, algorithms, everything you need to do everything we just talked about. So if you want to actively learn new, fascinating concepts each day and get 20% off the annual subscription to view all the problems in the archives, just be one of the first 200 to head on over to brilliant.org slash vector and finish your day a little smarter every day. Thanks, Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Okay, so Austin is awesome, and these were some great tips. I especially love this tip about just shooting and shooting. That's something I try to do with everything. Conscious repetition. Don't just do something over and over again like a robot. Each and every time you do it, try to figure out something specific, specific that you want to improve, and keep it in mind for every shot, actively trying to make every shot better than the previous one. Then, when you start to nail it, pick the next thing, and then the next, and so on. That's my hashtag pro tip anyway. If you shoot with your iPhone or whatever camera phone, I'd love to hear your tips. Hit like, hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and then hit up the comments below and let me know. And thank you so much for watching.